So, so VAST was started with uh, a very clear goal to simplify storage uh, as it had been for the 30 years prior in terms of customers that were wrestling with the, the trade-off between performance and capacity with the tiering that comes as a result of the decisions that get made around different storage systems and the complexity of managing those tiers. And basically when we started the company, we just talked to customers about what else they had, um, were looking for from flash storage. And the interesting thing is none of them said that they needed any more performance from the flash systems that they were buying at the time, but that, those systems represented maybe something in the order of five to 10% of the data that was in their data centers. On the flip side, the remainder of that data lived in hard drives and um, the customers would tell us things like, well, if you could solve the cost problem, of course we would buy flash for everything. And here we saw it was more than just kind of like the need for IOPS, but, but there were two primary compelling events that gave us confidence that we were onto something big. Um, the first of which is that, you know, if you look at the, the, the problem set from the operator's perspective, administrators, storage engineers, um, what you're doing today is you're throwing people at the problem of managing this complexity within a data center. Um, systems are devoting cycles, not to serving applications, but rather moving data up and down the pyramid. That's a bad use of, of storage capability. Um, but the bigger problem that we identified in the foundational thesis of VAST is that in 2020 and beyond, you'll have a whole new class of applications that consume data in ways that are unimaginable uh, five to 10 years ago. These new class of applications, inclusive of big data and machine learning, they want the fastest access to the largest amounts of data. Uh, and here, if your data sets are suffering under the weight of the performance limits of your archive, you'll never be able to mine them for new insights that come from, for example, machine learning. And so this became a compelling event to ask ourselves a question, which is, what if we were able to resolve the economic challenge that customers have today with Flash and make it possible to democratize Flash for everything. The original goal of the company was actually to be, um, uh, we were thinking we were gonna make the world's first all Flash archive. But then we started to think further about this idea of getting to a place where you could now for the first time afford to put all of your data on NVMe infrastructure. And our conclusion was, you know, despite our best attempts, it's impossible to build a slow all Flash archive. And then we started to think through that a little bit more and we realized that there's a massive opportunity here to really consolidate that complexity and not build the world's first all flash archive, but take customers to a new end state, an end state where all of their data can be on a single tier of flash that's fast enough for all of your applications, it's cheap enough for all of your data, and it's scalable enough such that you can really consolidate down to one cloud platform. And so um, the, the first objective is to make our customers' lives easier from an operations and administration perspective. The bigger initiative is to enable the next generation of applications that have those demanding requirements on data that come from um, being able to elevate all of your data sets to NVMe. And so because um, you know, we, we didn't think of a better term, uh, we call this concept universal storage. And we think about it as a universal data platform for all of your applications. Um, here, the number one thing that VAST will, we think will be famous for is the elimination of that trade-off between performance and capacity. It's a system that's built entirely from NVMe. We're religious against a lot of things. One of those things in particular is against uh, needing to tier your data to some subordinate hard drive based storage system. So you get sub millisecond access on every request. But on the flip side, performance was never our was our objective and performance becomes the happy outcome of solving the efficiency problem. So we spend all of our time thinking about cost. And what we built is a system that has tier five cost efficiency such that customers can now afford to buy five to 10 times more flash than they could in the past. And once they get there, they have an overwhelming or abundance of performance um, that's being dedicated to their applications such that they don't need to worry about performance anymore. The third element that we added here is scale. So um, we had to think about how to present this concept to applications. And the conclusion was that um, the bulk of the data within a data center was living on file and object storage. So we started there. And here we think we're also breaking trade-offs around how people think about protocols. It's a multi-protocol system that supports uh, the ability to write and read from any protocol. And at the same time, um, gives you sub millisecond latency. So in some senses, what we have is a system that gives you the latency of an all flash block device. 
the, um, the, the throughput and speed of not just a, a NAS, a scale out NAS, but rather a, a parallel file system level of capability. And we'll talk about that with respect to AI. We're changing the way people think about NFS and the scale and the cost that looks more like an object store. So now you can buy storage that's very versatile and um, have your applications mounted with whatever way they're most comfortable writing to storage. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's been since August since we last uh, talked to the, let's call it the Tech Field Day community. And um, we have made some announcements. So the first of those um, was that the vast data is on a, a very healthy growth clip. Um, when we started the company and when we launched the company, we said we had sold more than any company had sold in their first history, the first year of history by the time we launched. That growth curve has continued throughout the two years that we've been selling the product such that we still stand as the fastest growing company in storage history. We grew 600% year over year in our second quarter of this year. Um, and we're looking to close out 2020 with a bang. So um, because of that, we've got a lot of advent, uh, investor interest. We've got about $140 million of cash in the bank right now. Um, we're not burning that money. Um, and we're, um, we're adding more uh, board members to the, to the company periodically. Um, in, in August, we announced that Tom Mendoza, who is formerly the president and uh, one of the chairmen of NetApp, was fortunate to join the board to help us through our, our very, um, very quick growth spurt. Okay, so how all of this done um, ties back to the Intel sponsorship because we build very extensively on top of Intel technologies. And we had the fortune in 2018 to take advantage of these technologies that came into the market and basically put them together in a new and interesting way that allows you to rethink how storage can scale, how can storage can be efficient, uh, and how storage can be resilient. So the three technologies that we selected, the first is a new storage protocol called NVMe over fabrics, um, which we think of as analogous to RDMA for flash. From a CPU on one side of a network, you can DMA, um, bypassing an operating system, uh, an IO into an SSD on the other side of the network in around 10 microseconds of time. Just to provide a point of comparison, um, if you were to do that across a PCI bus and a server, it's about two microseconds of overhead. So you basically have direct attached levels of performance without needing to co-locate state with computing anymore. And what we've done is we've essentially disaggregated the CPUs of our system from the underlying state. We built this new shared everything architecture where every single CPU has a global view to all of the state. Every CPU, if you do like an NVMe list on those machines, you'll see every single QLC drive and every single Optane drive presented to that machine as if it was directly attached whereas no CPU that runs our logic owns any of the, um, of the media exclusively. So everything changes when you disaggregate. Uh, you can think about new scalability models because now when you add CPUs, they don't need to talk to each other. They all have the same global view of the state of the system. And that eliminates a lot of the crosstalk that you would find within cluster environments that tends to limit scalability. When servers fail, you don't care because we think of these more like cattle than pets. When a controller fails, um, we just fail over IO services to some other system. You can have all but one controller fail in a cluster of a thousand machines and still be entirely online. Um, and most importantly, what this disaggregated shared everything architecture allows us to do is to lay the foundation for a bunch of new algorithms that we think of as global codes, all intended on bringing down the cost of storage by bringing up the effective efficiency of the system. So the second thing we had to do was to um, decide on a type of flash and our objective is to kill the hard drive. So we started with the lowest cost flash that we could get our hands on, which is Intel QLC flash. QLC is great from a read perspective. You get even better performance from these drives than you get from Optane SSDs, which are very fast. Um, from a reliability perspective, you can keep them on the floor for 10 years. <clears throat> now, from an endurance perspective, you have to write to these drives in a very particular way. Uh, otherwise you can wear them out prematurely. And so um, Intel calls the process that we do right shaping. And it's basically using the third technology that we bet on, which is Intel Optane SSD technology to create extremely large writes through a form of log structuring and then issue those down to QLC after the system has had the luxury of time and space to basically build a perfect write stripe. And so by writing in very large contiguous one gigabyte chunks, which is thousands of times larger than um, legacy storage systems ever planned to write to a, a, a SCSI device, 
Um, this new Optane technology allows us to basically, um, at a fraction of the cost of a distributed write buffer that you would otherwise build in, in DRAM, um, it allows the, the system the luxury of time to basically never have write amplification within the system, which is the process of correcting writes uh, that happen at less than what's called an erase block level. Uh, and here we get about 20 times the endurance from these drives as what was originally advertised from them. Uh, and that allows us to field, field QLC flash even in transactional environments for up to a decade. And so here we think about flash more like tape libraries in terms of your amortization schedule and how long you can keep the infrastructure on the floor. Uh, and here's how the cluster all gets put together. So um, this universal storage cluster basically consists of two different types of systems which are interconnected by an NVMe fabric. Today we have support for either Ethernet or InfiniBand. Uh, and at the bottom of the system, what you have is the state of the cluster. And the global namespace is organized in a series of very high density, you could think of as Ethernet or InfiniBand connected JBOFs, just a bunch of flash enclosures. Um, today we fit 675 terabytes of flash and another 18 terabytes of Optane in 2U of space. After we format that down for data protection, that gets you about 600 terabytes. And with a very novel form of data reduction, we can see anywhere between one petabyte to many petabytes in just 2U of space. And then to scale out the system, you just keep adding enclosures. We can support up to 1,000 in the cluster, uh, theoretically. Uh, in practice, we've delivered systems now that have dozens of enclosures within a single cluster for tens of petabytes of infrastructure. Uh, and we have customers planning to grow much larger. Now, these enclosures, they are no single point of failure. So you can start with as little as one, but there's no logic that runs in them whatsoever. They're just dense, stateful machines that are um, serving out NVMe requests onto the NVMe fabric. The logic all runs in the form of a Docker container on the other side of the network. Uh, today, we're shipping everything in Intel uh, Cascade Lake processors, Intel scalable Xeon processors. And um, all of our logic basically runs in a Docker container that's completely stateless. There's no metadata in these machines. There's no state in these machines. There's no caching. There's no anything. They're just running functions and accessing data on the other side of the NVMe fabric. Each of these containers provides two services globally. Uh, you can think of it as a global protocol server. You can get to the entire namespace for many of the containers and a global flash controller that uh, handles any of the administration or data functions of the cluster globally. You can scale out the number of containers to get to the performance levels that you need to hit. Uh, and here, as I mentioned earlier, these become linear units of performance scalability. One of the principal inventions of VAST is basically the elimination of east-west traffic within a distributed cluster architecture. There's no need for cache coherency code. There's no need for cache. There's no volatility in the system. Everything's persistent and every CPU sees all of the data all the time. And so these containers, you scale them up to get to whatever performance level you want, and each of them can export all of the protocols simultaneously. Today we have support for NFS, version 3. We've extended support for NFS to also include support for RDMA over either Ethernet or InfiniBand fabrics. We work with NVIDIA's GPU direct storage, which is solely for the purpose of serving next generation AI applications. Okay, so cluster architecture, much more resilient. Uh, you've got containers all running that are stateless. You can fill as many as you'd like to, uh, and everything becomes a linearly scalable platform. At the bottom, what you have are global algorithms that uh, are intended to basically reduce the overall cost of storage. Um, here, what you have is um, the benefits of disaggregation in the form of being able to have a single compression dictionary that's global, that every machine can see, that reduces data for things like computer vision applications by anywhere from 1.5 to 1 to 2 to 1 on an average basis, which is a big reconciliation in the spirit of getting to flash for all of your AI data. Second is you can shape data that goes into the QLC drive. So you get over, uh, let's call it 10 years of longevity of these devices. Third is we can um, implement new erasure codes that only have two and a half percent overhead. And as I mentioned here, this is the, the benefit that comes from data reduction. So anyway, the point is, we're out to kill the hard drive and it's more than just QLC flash that's contributing here. It's a lot of smart algorithms.